Hey guys, day one of the teardown. Um, obviously, the you can see the Kefar 3s are returned to my friend Ben. He lent me these PMC uh, TB2 uh, studio monitors. I, I like the sound. They're they're very super super like very 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 wide uh, three dimensional thing going on. And anybody who says monitor studio monitors can't be used repurposed as stereo or home stereo speakers is full of shit. All you gotta do is set it, set it up right. I mean, in fact, it's 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 a couple of drivers in a box with a funky transmission line port, you know, going out the back, and uh, you know, it's 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 a speaker. It doesn't matter if it's a studio monitor or it's a fucking home. Th if it doesn't sound right, it doesn't sound right. But no, these things really, really, there's no bass. I mean, it's a transmission line. It's not one notey bass for what there is, but I use my usual test tracks. My Mobile Fidelity 200 gram pressing of Tarkus uh, that I ripped to PCM. The bass is barely there. Um, the six minute uh, 40 mark into fourth, fourth of fifth Genesis, same problem. The bass is there, but it's barely there. Uh, you're not going to shake the room with these, no matter how much EQ boost you put on the bottom end. And the other thing I noticed too is <clears throat> both the R3s and these guys, I had to tweak the treble a little bit, and I think it's because I'm using the 1000 watt class D amps, they're supposed to be flat 20 hertz to 20k hertz, which I don't know, but they, they sounded very dry <clears throat> uh, using that amp. Anything else I've ever driven with the R3s or any other speakers, I've had to add no EQ other than the, the Bose 901s and the Alta Audio Alyssas, which was in my last year's review or two years ago, whatever it was. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to stop the video there. I'm going to take this shit down. And then I'm going to make some uh, Sharpie outlines. It doesn't matter if I muck up the wall because this is all getting repainted anyways. So, all right, guys, see you in a few minutes. Hey, guys, we're back. Uh, so, yeah, basically this is going to be about 52 inches and a little bit uh, tall. There's going to be a 14-inch opening up here and another 14-inch opening down here for my old uh, lp size box CD box sets. Um, and some of the new stuff that I got that are also kind of LP sized. Uh, this shelf is going to be the piece of shit Apple uh, M M1 processor fucking Mac Mini that I bought at Costco. Uh, also, the Node 2 is going to go over here. Sony SACD player on this shelf. I'm gonna, like I was saying before, I'm going to buy a few more of those, you know, because they're still around. Sony AVR here. OnQ AV preamp up here. And obviously going to put some molding around it, you know, to hide all the nasties. Over here is going to be the amplifier cutout. Basically, I want to keep it central to the wall so I can have equidistance wiring. Plus, the nice, other nice thing is when I ran the uh, surround cables, I left myself enough uh, slack here that when I do run these, I can run these back around and then into the um, uh, Orchard Audio. So basically it'll be the two Macintosh MC50s down here. Orchard Audio 6 channel, you know, still work in progress in the middle. And up top here is the Woodbox uh, Ice Power uh, amp um, for running what's going to be behind the sofa uh, or on the back wall, two stacked H-frame uh, subwoofers out of phase with the, the corn walls in the front. But that shit's way in the future. Um, another thing that's way out in the future is I like to get two heresies Heresy uh, Series 4s one day, slam them together, angle them up a little bit, and then use it as a center channel. But as far as center channels go, what I did here last year, this is the best damn sounding center channel I've ever built. You know, and the weird thing is there's no real box to this, right? It was basically the two top sections of the 1042s with a uh, planar tweeter in the middle. And it's basically a series inductor for the low pass filter for these guys and a series series cap for this guy and that was it um again using the wall i guess as a baffle I, I guess i don't know but it sounds good so who gives a shit why or how but yeah and one day this may go down in two heresies side by side uh what else i guess basically yeah that's it guys um the steampunk wiring is going to go all the ac is going to be behind the wall this is all going to get painted and yeah, it's going to it's going to go from a lab into a living room. So stay tuned and thanks again for watching guys. Have a happy Sunday and uh, we'll talk later. Bye.